Hi, welcome to the Corner of Knit and Tea, episode 73. My name's Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the corner of knitandtea.com, and that's where this episode's show notes and every episode's show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Stash Buckler Adventures in Yarn, and we have a Ravelry group called The Corner of Knit and Tea. Please come and join us. Hi! It is Saturday, January 30th. I am recording a day early because tomorrow is our monthly spinning day and we are going uh, west quite a ways, so I will be out pretty much all day. So I decided to sit down and record today. It is a lovely day. We are supposed to hit 60 today, which for Kansas in the middle of winter is uh, kind of unheard of. Um, we occasionally have some warmer snaps come through, but, but this is kind of crazy this year, um, although I believe we are supposed to get a winter storm in the coming week, so it won't last too long. My husband and I are going to go out a little bit later. He and a bunch of friends um, have uh, radio-controlled airplanes and quadcopters and all of those kinds of things, and they are going to go out and fly them, and um, my husband invited me along, so I am going to bring my knitting and watch them and hang out and we'll go get something to eat after and so it should be a nice day and spend a little time outside while we can um, because I suspect that February will be more cold um, before we see some spring in March. Otherwise, the week has been pretty good. I feel like I haven't gotten a lot done. Um, I was a little bit under the weather earlier in the week with all these weather changes. Um, my sinuses are not doing that well. Um, and I kind of unintentionally gave up caffeine last weekend. I didn't realize it. Um, I uh, kind of stopped drinking Diet Coke. Um, and um, my husband bought a soda stream, so I was making stuff in the soda stream, but all of the options that were available at the time were um, non-caffeinated. So I was drinking some of that, um, and then uh, this week at work I was mostly drinking herbal teas just because that's what I had a taste for. Um, and I realized about Thursday that maybe part of the reason I was feeling so terrible was because I used to drink at least a Diet Coke a day, and um, then have usually a cup of black tea too, and so maybe I was feeling crappy because I had no caffeine took me a little while to realize that. Um, so I'm going to institute a little bit of caffeine back in, but um, actually the one thing that I noticed was that I was sleeping really well at night. So I think I'm going to try and um, cut off caffeine earlier in the day and see if I can keep that part of it. Um, but hopefully not the headaches and the feeling kind of out of it and gross and yeah. So that was kind of my week. I will go ahead and jump in. Um, I hope you have had a wonderful week as well. But let's get started. I got a new catalog from the Republic of Tea and in it was a sample tea, um, Downton Abbey Crawley Sisters. And um, it says that this is rooibos, carob, cocoa kernels, natural chocolate and strawberry flavor, sweet blackberry leaves, and bourbon vanilla beans. Um, and as you know, if you've been watching for a while, I'm not a huge fan of rooibos, um, but it actually smells really good. So we're going to go ahead and try it. Again, this is the Downton Abbey Crawley Sisters Tea from um, the Republic of Tea. And as I have mentioned before, um, I love a bunch of their teas, but if you sign up for their catalog, you get one every other month and um, there's a little insert in there and you get a free um, packet of tea in every catalog. So um, if you want to join to sample some stuff just sign up for their mailing list. So I am drinking this today in my skills mug with Batman and his knitting. This is available from Society6. I was reminded of this this week when my friend Glenn posted a photo and said, you have this mug, right? And I said, you bet I do. So that is Crawley Sisters in my skills mug. Ooh, that was pretty good. Like I said, I was a little skeptical because of the rooibos. It's very strawberry, which um, is actually really awesome because a lot of times I find that strawberry teas, the strawberry gets completely beat out by other berries, um, and so it doesn't really taste like that. I can also definitely taste a little bit of the cocoa. So that is pretty good. I would recommend that. So check it out. Okay, let's move on to the real stuff. For knitting this week, I have a couple finished objects. The first one is very little. 
It is a little Lowlands hat. As you remember, I showed you the adult size last week. I have it here for comparison. Um, I was using Malabrigo uh, Merino Worsted in the Violetas colorway and the Lowlands pattern by Tin Can Knits. And one of the things that I love about Tin Can Knits patterns is that she often designs them in sizes from child all the way through adult. So if you want to knit some matchy matchy, you can. I had about 40% of the skein left over, which I calculated was enough to do the um, infant size or the baby size. I probably could have gone up and done the toddler size, um, but I was a little afraid of running out of yarn. But I did this little one to be paired off with its mama. This is for the 25,000 Tooks project. I won't go into that again, but it is on my page. Um, I am putting together a box from my knitting group and um, I will be sending it off not this weekend, but next weekend. So I hope to do at least one more hat this week. Um, that will bring my total up to uh, four knitted hats that I have knit specifically for this project. And then, uh, like I said last week, I have, um, I think I have two hats that I have knit, but um, never really worn other than to just try them on for pictures. Um, and so I am going to send those along as well and hopefully warm up some heads. Um, I am really excited that my knitting group thought this was a good idea. So I have a few hats from them as well. So I think we're probably going to end up, well, I have six. Um, we might be sending off close to a dozen, which I am super, super excited about. So again, 25,000 Tooks project, done. The second one is a big one. It was my biggest um, project of the month. And um, sorry about that. My nose is all runny from the tea. Um, it is my Vita shawl. Uh, this is uh, the Vita Shawl by uh, Mina, who is the Knitting Expat podcast, and um, she is, uh, she also has a shop Mina makes, but this is her Vita Shawl pattern. She named it, um, she made it for her mother and named it after her mother, and it's got this great um, leafy lace, um, and you knit a uh, shawl. I did this in Tosh Merino Light. Uh, the colorway is Mirth. I had two skeins of Mirth. And then um, the edging is a light greeny, kind of tealy gray. Yeah, it's called Mica. <laughs> Same yarn, Tosh Merino Light. So, and this thing is huge. It is way beyond my wingspan. Um, wingspan. I uh, did as I said I was going to do, and I went ahead and just steam blocked this today. That enabled me to not block um, the top part very much. Um, and to uh, just kind of block the bottom with the iron. So the points aren't perfect, but actually this is perfect for me and it is huge. And um, I plan on wearing it this week as soon as it gets cold because um, it's gonna be cold and I'll need a nice warm Tosh Merino Light shawl. If you have not knit with Tosh Merino Light, it is so soft. The only thing I think is softer is Malabrigo Lace, which is so soft, I can't even, I can't even qualify how soft it is. Um, but my favorite things to do is knit um, big shawls um, in in Tosh Merino Light or in the Malabrigo Lace and then um, basically wear them kind of bandana style around me. I know, it's huge! Um, I'm being eaten by my shawl. Um, but wear them kind of bandana style like this. Um, and uh, what I find is that the singles because Tosh Merino Light and the Malabrigo Lace are singles. And I find um, that they kind of, um, because they're so light, um, first of all, they full just a little bit because they're singles, um, which means they kind of, um, they felt just a little bit and it creates this beautiful, beautiful um, fabric. And I feel like it traps little pockets of air in there because it's so light and airy um, and it keeps me so warm and it's just gorgeous. And as you could tell, these are my favorite colors. They're not showing up quite perfectly on the um, monitor, but I will be taking photos and posting them to Instagram and to my project page. So this is my Vita shawl, done very excited. I need to take photos and um, Mina was having a Vita Cal in her group. So um, I am going to uh, join that and who knows, maybe even win a prize, maybe not. But I have a beautiful, beautiful shawl um, as part of the process. So I am super happy with that. And again, Vita shawl, um, a really nice knit. Even, um, even if you're not a super sophisticated lace knitter, I would definitely recommend this. You can make it a slightly smaller size. The um, medium size is one skein of the um, 
yarn for the body and then one skein for the edging. So I ended up using two for the body and one for the edging because I knew I wanted it to be huge and because that's what I had. Um, but um, you can make it a little bit smaller. Um, there are also some socks and a hat in this collection. Um, it kind of uses the same motif. So if you're interested in trying it, check it out on Ravelry. So that leaves me with one whip and just a day and a half um, until the end of the month. And I am really, really hoping to finish this. And um, the great thing, uh-oh, well, I'll have to get that. I'll have to pause and get that in a minute, but I will. Um, this is the um, Breakers. I'm sorry. Yes, this is the Breakers pattern from the Tempest collection. Um, uh, the pattern itself is by Holly Yo. It is for a big oversized cowl. And um, this time I am finally not in the middle of a row. I finished a row last night and was like, okay, I have to leave it there. Um, this is a big fluffy cowl. It is meant to be um, oversized and um, then it is uh, doubled kind of like an infinity loop. Um, so you knit it uh, lengthwise, which is what I have been doing. And then um, it will, they have a specific um, way to sort of graft the ends together. So I am getting really, really close. I know it looks huge and wide and I have um, maybe about six or eight more rows. This is just going to be huge and oversized and squishy and I am so so excited. Um, the yard that I'm using is from Woolfolk. It's their far base which is their um, roughly worsted base. It's kind of a, I've showed you this before, but it's kind of a cable construction yarn um, which again just makes it really light and airy um, and I love how it's knitting up. I'm using a nine. I think the pattern calls for an eight but I liked the fabric I was getting so I may actually be a little wider anyway. Um, I've woven in most of my ends except not for these three which I just did in the past couple days. Um, I am going to take this with me this afternoon and hopefully maybe even finish it. Um, I would really like to finish it for this month because I would like to enter it into a few um, cows and stuff for Harry Potter house. Um, and so this is um, my biggest project that I'm going to try and finish in the next day or two um, and get this one done for this month. Um, and after that my Except for, well, okay, we won't talk about my, my whips, um, my um, sock yarn blanket, but then my needles are kind of empty, which means it is time to um, do a couple new things and uh, go back to something. Actually, I shouldn't say my needles are empty. The big thing that I need to do is my mom's mittens. That is um, definitely on the docket for February 1st. Um, I need to do some little uh, slippers for Roxy and I want to send them as part of her Valentine's Day package. So um, I need to knit those in the next couple days because those will need felting and I need to get those ready to go up to her. Um, and I hope to knit another hat this week to send off to um, the 25,000 Tooks project. So those are the three things that I hope to work on and if I'm really, really lucky, finish. Um, as you know, my mom's mittens have been dragging on. I've just been terrible about these. I really, really have. Um, and I just need to finish them. And as soon as I sit down and do it, um, they will be done. And the carrot for my doing them is that I am going to cast on a sweater. Um, I woke up yesterday morning and was like, I want to knit a sweater. I want to knit a sweater now. Um, and I have a couple sweater quantities of yarn, so I don't need to buy anything. I have some patterns. Um, and there are other patterns on Ravelry. I think I'm mentally rearranging what I was going to use for different things. Um, but I have a pattern that I really, really, really really, really want to do. And um, I have to finish my mom's mittens before I can wind yarn and cast on. So that is motivation to finish those darn mittens this week. Um, the only other thing that I think I want to do is I want to try and knit a few um, little uh, uh, little stuffed hearts, little just puffy hearts um, for Valentine's Day for a couple swap packages. So um, I definitely have my work cut out for me this week um, with lots of little projects, but hopefully I will finish a lot of them and be able to show you them next week along with this one. Um, but again, I hope to finish this one this weekend. So that is the knitting news. Let's move on to spinning. I am going to pause briefly while I grab something that rolled away off the table and then we'll start again with spinning. Okay, let's keep going. Last week I showed you um, a braid that was actually on the bobbin and I did finish that one and um, 
I took pictures and put it on Instagram, but it has actually already gone to its new home, so I won't be able to show that one to you. Um, I had also showed you a braid of Hello Yarn that was a special order, um, and I called it Ghastly Horrors. It's actually Ghastly Silence. Um, I kind of mixed it up with the other braid that came out that month. Um, it was a beautiful braid on Falkland, and because I am recording a day early, I do not have it finished. I have um, the singles wound into a ball to ply, and this will not give you any, any, any idea of the depth of colors. Um, this is absolutely amazing. These are completely not my colors, but there is gold and there is kind of a um, kind of bilious yellow, um, and there is forest green and black and navy and a little bit of teal. Um, and browns and this skein has so many colors it's amazing if you look at my instagram photo i posted a photo a couple days ago um, of the bobbin halfway through and i kind of stacked the colors on the bobbin um, so it would give a pretty shot of all the different colors that are in it and um, you can see from there it is just an amazing amazing um braid of color so that is that is adrian who is hello yarn and her color genius um, today I need to ply this one and the reason it is in a ball is because I said that I would show you um, last week I talked about the Acreworks bobbins and this is the bobbin that I am testing. Uh, like I said this is Sunflower in the Orchid colorway and um, what rolled away <laughs> under the table and over towards the closet was the center of the bobbin which is why I had to stop to pick it up. This is the shaft. It's got the little um, push buttons so that it um, goes into the um, into the plastic pieces like I showed you last week. You just push them in and once they're in you twist and it is locked into place and you are ready to go with the bobbin. Um, as for a review, I don't really have any complaints about this bobbin except, and someone, um, the rest of the group is having a little bit of the same problem. The shaft is just a little tiny bit too um, small. I know, shaft too small, great. Um, <laughs> just a little bit, tiny bit too small to get onto my flyer. It's a little bit snug and it catches. Um, and several other testers reported the exact same problem. So um, they are actually, uh, they ordered like whatever they need to make, um, whatever size piece of equipment, drill bit, I, I mean, it's not a drill, but whatever they need to um, enlarge that just a little bit for us. I feel so dirty when I'm talking about this. I, I hope you all are not thinking about it that way, but now of course you are because I said it. Um, Anyway, they're going to enlarge that just a little bit and send the rest of us new cores um, for the bobbins. Otherwise, I have absolutely no complaints. The bobbin is um, beautiful. It is so lightweight that I have been able to release a lot of the tension on my wheel, which is kind of fun because it all moves easier and I don't um, have to set the take up quite so high. Um, it has been a little bit interesting. Plying for the first time on this one was a little interesting because it is so light that there is no weight to the bobbin and I found plying to be a little odd for the first little bit until I got some fiber and some weight on the bobbin. Um, but I will try that again tonight. Otherwise, I cannot recommend Acreworks highly enough. If you'd like to try them, uh, it is a fun, um, just a fun bobbin to put on your wheel. And um, like I said last week, I talked about the flat pack features and um, the, the cost features, um, that they are a little less expensive than some of the bobbins for the wheels. So I um, am giving this a hearty yes. I will probably be buying a couple more for my wheel um, so that I have a set. And the only problem is what color and what pattern. So you can check them out at acreworks.com. So um, that is mostly what I've got, which means it is time to show you what I'm going to spin next week. This is um, another braid of Hello Yarn, and this was actually the one that I was kind of mixing up Ghastly Silence with. This is um, the other braid inspired by photos, um, and it is called Claude Horrors. And um, it is on BFL and Silk, and it is all kinds of browns. It reminds me um, kind of of not necessarily s'mores, but it reminds me of all different kinds of chocolate. Um, now it does have some orange and a little bit of ready bits, so that's a little different, but it mostly has like warm chocolate browns and then kind of this latte color here um, and, and then just a real, real light 
um, tan there and some white and this is going to be gorgeous. Um, now I wanted to talk a little bit about how I'm going to spin this. This is my second spin for my Harry Potter owl. Again, Harry Potter house cup is just kind of a well, it's mostly a game for imaginary internet points. Um, and they have these little projects called owls. They're um, after ordinary wizarding levels in the books. And you set out a challenging project for yourself to complete over um, three months time. And I chose uh, a spinning owl this time. Um, and I am uh, spinning uh, one uh, single ply, so basically fold singles, two ply, three ply, and four ply yarns for this. And this is actually going to be my cabled yarn, which is a four ply. And so what I'm going to do is I have two braids of this, and I am going to spin each braid um, on its own and ply it on itself. So um, I will spin this braid. Um, at first I was thinking I might spin it straight through. I'm thinking I might tear it into a few different strips. So I'm gonna spin this braid and then I'm going to wind it into a plying ball and ply it on itself. And I'm going to do the same with the second braid. And what I'm going to do when I do that is I'm going to try and put extra twist in. Um, so basically I'm going to try and over ply just a little bit when I do the two ply. Um, because then I am going to ply, okay, <laughs> I'm not explaining this well. Uh, the first thing I am going to do is spin my singles and I'm going to spin my singles S, which means I'm going to spin, uh, I'm going to have the wheel going clockwise. Then I'm going to ply it on itself and I'm going to ply Z, which is you always ply in the opposite direction you spin. So I will ply counterclockwise. Um, and when I ply counterclockwise, I'm going to add a little bit of extra um, ply into it. I'm going to try and over ply it just a little bit because then to get the four ply, I'm going to ply each two ply together to make a four ply. I'm going to, I'm basically just going to join them together. So I'll have one big eight ounce skein. Um, and then I'm going to ply them S counterclockwise again, um, because you always want to go the opposite direction you went last time. So if I over ply a little bit when I do the two ply, then theoretically it will untwist a little bit and kind of relax into the cable ply. And the reason it is called a cable ply is because when you um, ply two two plies together, um, it creates this very, um, when you do it right, it creates this very rounded look that looks like a cable. Um, and so it is called cable ply. So um, hopefully I, I don't know that I will get both of these done this week. I would, I would love to, um, but so I may be showing you the two separate plies or I don't know where I'll be when I get next weekend, but I will take lots of pictures for an Instagram and um, you can watch me do this. This is um, probably the most complicated yarn I will do for, um, for the owl. I already did the two ply. Um, singles is um, a little bit complicated because you have to adjust your tension because you're not um, spinning singles to then be plied. Um, as I said, when you spin, you're putting in um, tension into that yarn and, and twist into that yarn. And um, then when you ply, you're kind of letting it relax the opposite direction. Um, so you're actually sort of taking the twist, you're letting the twist relax a little bit. Um, and when you spin singles to leave them as singles, you have to put a little bit less twist in there because you're kind of um, over twisting them when you're doing plies. I'm terrible at this. I am not a spinning expert. Um, as I, I recommended a couple spinning podcasts last week and I heartily encourage you to go ahead and watch those. Um, I am terrible at explaining technical things. I'm also not super technical. I kind of um, spin by gut and feel um, which works for me, but is terrible when I'm trying to explain it to other people. So, um, yeah. So take everything I say with a grain of rice and, uh, go watch someone who knows what they're talking about. Honestly, I'm mostly doing this for fun and just to show you what I'm doing. So, that is sort of the end of spinning, except that I had one question, which uh, Kelly messaged me on Ravelry and said, I'm not sure if this topic was covered in a show I may have missed, but I was hoping you could shed some light on a person getting started spinning. I would like to know how you got interested, introduced to um, spinning. How did you pick your first wheel? Um, 
so I actually have done this in a previous episode, but I can't remember which one. So I will do it a little bit abbreviated here. Um, I started, when I started spinning, my first experience spinning was actually really terrible. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that, but it's true. Um, my first experience spinning, I picked out a beautiful, beautiful spindle. It was a Kundert spindle and I highly recommend them. Um, and I picked a beautiful braid of fiber in um, the shop to uh, start learning to spin on that um, no one should have let me bought it, it, buy. It was gorgeous, but it was a merino silk. So it was super short stapled and slippery, which is terrible to try and learn on, really terrible to try and learn on. Um, I took a two hour spindle class and basically they taught us how to um, work with the fiber, which is how to draft the fiber. And then they taught us how to spin singles on a spindle and we used the park and draft method, which is basically you park your spindle, you draft some fiber, you twist the spindle and then you let it go. Um, and it is a great method for learning. Um, that after, right after we spun some singles, they had us take them off um, to Andy and Ply. And um, Rachel of Welford Pearls, the Woolen Spinning Podcast, actually just did a great demo on how to Andy and ply. Um, it's also called bracelet plying. It is kind of tricky and it is easy to get tangled up. Um, so they had us wind off our singles. It works very well for like small amounts of singles. Um, they had us wind off our singles and taught us how to Andy and ply. And I plied and I kind of had boat rope. Um, that was enough to make me not want to go back to spinning for a long time. I don't fault the teacher at all. Um, spinning is a skill that um, requires a lot of um, muscle memory and it takes some time to um, really get the feel for how to work with the fiber and how to spin and um, how to kind of work with your spindle and um, get going until you can like draft and spin in fluid motions. Um, so I would just say that if you're starting out, um, don't get discouraged if the first few times you really don't like it um, because it is it is a hard thing to learn, especially I learned knitting when I was a child, so I don't really remember it being super hard. Um, so it was, it was very, it was a little off-putting to me in the beginning um, that it required so much work. So anyway, about a beautiful spindle, like I said, I can't say um, things I can't say enough good things about Kundert. Um, the importance is to buy yourself a nice tool. You do not have to break the bank. There are plenty of spindles in the $20 to $40 range. I think Kundert's range right in there um, that will be nice. Um, I can sort of recommend that you don't necessarily start with either um, a CD spindle that you make at home or one of the like Ashford original, like the learning to spin kits, because those are big and heavy and clunky and I find them a little bit difficult to maneuver. So the first thing I would say is get yourself a nice spindle if you want to start learning to spin. Um, the book that I used to learn to spin was Respect the Spindle by Abby Frankmont. Again, cannot recommend it highly enough. Um, basically what happened is I went several years without spinning and then I made some friends who spin who kept saying, oh yeah, you're gonna spin. We're gonna get you to spin. And at some point someone sent me a braid of fiber and said, just try it again. And so I pulled out the Respect the Spindle book, which I had not had the first time around. I pulled out the Respect the Spindle book, uh, or I guess I purchased the Respect the Spindle book. I read it. I sat down with my spindle and some much nicer fiber. And um, that time it kind of clicked. So um, I spent probably about three months spinning on a spindle only and learning to spin on a variety of fibers. I would suggest if you're starting, um, start with something like Blueface Lester, um, which is typically called BFL, um, or spin something like Falkland. Both of those have um, a somewhat long staple, so they're really, um, they're nice fibers, they feel good, um, but they are um, e a little bit easier to draft for beginning spinners. They're not so short stapled that you have to add a lot of twist um, to keep them together. Um, they're not slippery or slick like some of the other fibers are, like silk. Um, so I would, that's what I would recommend to start with. Um, to answer the question about wheels, my advice on wheels is try as many as you can get your hands on. Find people who own wheels, ask if you can send it them. Um, everybody will be super nice about it. If you have a store near you that sells wheels or does a spinning, learning to spin class, please take one. Um, I am lucky enough to live near the Yarn Barn, which is in Lawrence, Kansas, and they sell um, 
tons and tons of wheels. I know they sell Magicraft, Ashford, Shacked. Um, I'm missing a bunch. Slendrum. Um, they sell a ton of variety of the big wheel makers um, and they have classes where you can go and try every wheel. So I actually, I tried a ton of wheels before settling on what I wanted. Um, and each wheel is very specific to each person because uh, mine, for instance, is a very compact wheel. It's very um, small. The treadles are very close together. It works for me because I'm a short person. I'm 5'3". It absolutely does not work for my friend Beth, who is... I think 5'9 or 5'10, she sat down at it and was like, oh my god, I can't spin at this thing. I feel like I'm just hunched over. So um, wheels are a completely personal choice. Um, let Everybody will evangelize about their wheel and how it's the best wheel. Um, try everything before you buy. Um, and then the other thing I will say is that if you buy a wheel that you ultimately decide um, you don't like, you can always sell it and move to a different wheel. Um, the secondhand wheel market is um, a great place to go. Wheels hold their value. Um, so typically you will find wheels sold at close to what people paid for them, um, which means you won't get a great deal if you're, um, if you're buying secondhand for the first time around. I mean, you will probably get a good deal because they'll probably throw in some extras and maybe a little bit of fiber, um, but, but wheels tend to hold their value. So my point is if you buy a wheel and it ends up being the wrong wheel, you will be able to sell it for close to what you paid for it and then move on to a different wheel. Um, and no wheel is the be all end all, um, especially because over time your skill set will change and you may change what kind of wheel you want. So Kelly, I hope that answered some of your questions. Um, if you have more, please feel free to um, PM me and we can discuss it further. Um, I can, you know, help in whatever way I can, but I guess just ask spinners around you what they know, what they like, where the good stores are, where you might take classes um, and get out there and try it. It's super fun. Um, I think there's probably a craftsy class on it. I'm sure there is, um, and um, there are a number of videos and um, Interweave sells videos from some master spinners, so there are a variety of places that you can go to find materials. So I guess that's about it for this week. I feel like I've been a little scatterbrained all over. I haven't had any caffeine today. I wonder if that's it. So, um, if this was your first time, I'm sorry if this episode was a little scatterbrained and all over the place. Um, if you are, I hope you'll join me again. If you are joining me again, um, thank you for coming back and watching again. I do uh, very much enjoy spending time with you. Um, and as I always say, until next week, um, or until I see you again, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye.